Hello and welcome back to Pick Some Portraits. A few years ago, we did a video on MTV and animation. It was a sort of intro to MTV's animated output, so we looked at their promos, liquid television, early cartoon series, ending around 1993. Today we are going to continue where we left off with a look at the following year, 1994. To put you in the mindset, or to bring you back to 1994, the three hottest videos that year, according to MTV at least, were Snoop Dogg's Gin and Juice, Boys to Men's I'll Make Love to You, and in the top spot, Basket Case by Green Day. 1994 was also the 25th anniversary of Woodstock, a second festival took place the weekend of August 13th to commemorate the landmark event. Coverage was broadcast by both MTV and Pay-Per-View, or, or on Pay-Per-View if you wanted to see the festival unedited. In music news, Michael Jackson wedded Lisa Marie Presley, daughter of Elvis Presley. This was months after the first accusations of child sexual abuse had been levied against Jackson, and this marriage was seen as a distraction from said allegations. Lisa Left Eye Lopez was also in the news for burning down the mansion she shared with her partner, football player Andre Risen, after lighting his shoes on fire. This was apparently in retaliation for Risen allegedly abusing her. But by far the most prominent story from the world of popular music was the untimely death of Nirvana frontman Kurt Cobain. Nirvana had helped not only usher in a new genre and attitude in grunge, Cobain had been hailed as the voice of his generation. On April 8th, 1994, he was found with a self-inflicted shotgun wound to the head. Kurt Loder of MTV News would cover these stories extensively. He was an MTV fixture around this time. Non-animated shows on the network included The Real World. This featured several strangers picked to live together and have their lives taped to find out what happens when people stop being polite and start getting real. MTV revolutionized reality television with The Real World. Most of the drama, red entertainment, <laughs> came from the interpersonal relationships and conflicts between the strangers. The 1994 season, Season 3 San Francisco, is considered to be the show's breakout season. It is notable for including Pedro Zamora, an openly gay housemate. Now, queer representation, positive queer representation in pop culture was still extremely rare in 1994, yet the show depicted Zamora's relationship with Sean Sasser, which included the first same-sex commitment ceremony on television. Zamora would also use the platform to raise awareness of AIDS, which he was living with. Uh, we are not that far removed from AIDS hysteria, so the fact that so many people got to see Zamora as a regular person was huge. There was also the Jon Stewart Show, which was a talk show featuring future Daily Show host Jon Stewart, as well as Trashed, a trivia game where contestants put up personal belongings that would be smashed if they answered incorrectly. In terms of animation, MTV's most popular program was Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> that should not surprise anybody. Now we touched very briefly on Beavis and Butthead in our other video. Long-term viewers know my love of pop culture phenomenons. I have made videos on the Pokemon, South Park, and Simpsons phenomenons, and this period, uh, 1994, uh, also 93, was probably the height of Beavis and Butthead's relevance. The show had taken the heat off The Simpsons, which had previously been blamed for corrupting young viewers. In media reports about the show's controversy, the two are often referenced together, but where The Simpsons were accused of promoting mediocrity, you know, underachiever and proud of it, Beavis and Butthead were accused of killing a two-year-old child. In October 1993, two-year-old Jessica Mesner was killed when her five-year-old brother lit their mobile home on fire. Beavis had been portrayed as being obsessed with fire. The children's mother claimed he had watched an episode uh, featuring fire prior to burning the home, which is disputed, as the family didn't even have cable, and thus couldn't view MTV. Still, the media latched onto the story, as well as other examples of questionable behavior, mainly the show's treatment of animals. In 1994, Beavis and Butthead would again cause controversy, as the group Morality and Media linked them to another child's death. This time, it was eight-month-old Natalie Rivera, who was killed after being struck by a bowling ball that was thrown from an overpass by a youth who, again, didn't have cable and didn't watch the show. The controversy surrounding Beavis and Butthead feels like a classic example of deflection. Uh, rap and heavy metal music, video games, and cartoons have all been blamed for the corruption of children, while parental responsibility and media literacy remain ignored. Seeing pundits argue over the morality of a cartoon is also rich, especially when a few of them have since ended up in hot water over their own indecorous behavior. Despite this, and the efforts of these watchdog groups, Beavis and Butthead was a hit. Kids and young adults loved it. Looking at the merchandise Beavis and Butthead spawned, uh, the first thing we notice is they do not have licensed bands on their shirts. Uh, usually it's ACDC Metallica. Instead, we get generic Skull and Death Rock. 
Here we are seeing an ad for their video game from 1994, uh, which was terrible in my opinion. That year, Beavis and Butthead also lent their images to these trading cards. They were produced by Fleer Ultra and featured stills from the show, as well as original artwork. On television, 1994 marked the show's third and fourth season. Beavis and Butthead would appear in a series of vignettes at the 1994 VMAs, the Video Music Awards, alongside fan of the show, David Letterman. Letterman is said to be such a fan, he lended his voice to the cast of their 1996 movie, Beavis and Butthead Do America. Uh, which was rare. He didn't usually do appearances like that. Beavis and Butthead would also host the first annual Butt Bowl. This was a strategic piece of programming that aired during the Super Bowl halftime show. This interrupted a video for Guns N' Roses' November Rain and featured an episode from the previous year, Citizen Butthead, along with a clock counting down the minutes until the Super Bowl resumed. They would repeat the Butt Bowl through 1996. I also tracked down a promo for the Beavis and Butthead Marathon, a marathon that makes new episodes with what they were already deeming classic ones. In the summer of 1994, MTV would introduce two new animated series, The Brothers Grunt and The Head. The Brothers Grunt was created by Danny Antonucci, who would go on to create Ed, Ed, and Eddie for Cartoon Network later in the decade. Antonucci had established himself with 1987's Lupo the Butcher. In this short, he embraced his Italian-Canadian heritage and presented a butcher whose body falls apart after he cuts off his thumb. It's extremely gory, <laughs> obviously. It developed a cult following after being shown as part of the Spike and Mike Festival of Animation, which we should be looking at soon on Century of Schlock over on Patreon. If disturbing cartoons are your thing, that series was made for you. Patreon.com slash pics and portraits. Support us there if you can. With the brothers Grunt, Antonucci presented a bizarre family of human-like creatures who search for their missing brother, Perry. They are grown on warts, which is really gross. The whole series is intentionally disgusting and off-putting. Like Beavis and Butthead, music videos were incorporated into the episode, which run about five minutes each, making an unaltered commercial release virtually impossible. The brothers Grunt was very poorly received. It took over Beavis and Butthead's 7 p.m. slot after that was moved to 11, following the controversies we talked about earlier. The other original series was Eric Fogel's The Head. Fogel was inspired by Antonucci. Lupo had a huge effect on him. Like Antonucci, Fogel made his name after being featured in Spike and Mike's with the short Mutilator, Hero of the Wasteland. This followed a sort of Mad Max-like hero who traversed a post-apocalyptic wasteland and included some designs that would later show up in The Head. The Head was originally serialized on a show called MTV Oddities in 1994. MTV's next original cartoon, The Max, uh, would also debut there the following year, though. The head was named so after the main character Jim's enlarged head. He woke up like this one day. Inside Jim's head lives Roy, a purple alien, and the show consists of their efforts to stop a member of a rival alien species, Gork, from eating the brains of everyone on Earth. The supporting cast included Ray, who has a lawnmower blade lodged in his head, and Jim's girlfriend, Madeline, whose head at one point grows to resemble his. MTV's cartoons would all be packaged together, along with other shorts from Liquid Television, at MTV's Animation Weekend. Now I'm unsure exactly what weekend in 1994 this took place, but unique idents were created to promote it. Uh, some remnants of it exist on YouTube, uh, which I will of course link in the description. Unfortunately, neither the Brothers Grunt or the Head were long for this world, lasting until just 1995 and 96 respectively. And that just about wraps up MTV 1994. Feel free to chime in if I missed anything. You can also check out some of our other breakdowns of other networks and years. If you are still in the Halloween spirit, we also recently looked at the 1990s as a decade and how cartoons celebrated the spooky season. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. As I mentioned earlier, we are on Patreon. I know times are tough, but if you can spare it, $5 a month gets you access to Century of Schlock, our ongoing exploration of trash media from the 20th century. As always, thank you so much for your interest in this channel, and thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.